you never know what you'll find in the Maine woods. Aside from moose, deer, bear, porcupine, and the usual assortment of wild critters, the northern forest contains some man-made surprises, many relating to the state's timber industry. Old logging equipment ranging from rusting cable to axe heads and saw blades pepper the forest floor and riverbanks. But the most remarkable remnant of the log drive era can be found in a remote glade near the shores of Eagle Lake part of the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. For tucked amid the spruce and white pine, far from any road, is a pair of massive steel locomotives. How they got there, and what they were used for, is a fascinating story that sheds light on an equally fascinating chapter of New England history. In January 2019, I traveled to the town of Mount Chase in Maine's Aroostook County, to see the so-called ghost trains for myself. My guide was Blaine King, whose family owns Shin Pond Village, a collection of cozy housekeeping cabins, guest suites, campsites, a restaurant, and a store. In winter, it's a popular home base and overnight stop for snowmobilers, and also offers snowmobile and gear rentals, as well as fuel. The round trip from Shin Pond to Eagle Lake is about 130 miles on ITS 85 and can be completed in a single day. However, if you want to take your time, consider spending the night at Libby Camps, a remote sporting camp on Lake Millinocket. Family owned and operated by five generations of Libby's, the camp is best known as a fishing and hunting retreat and offers immediate access to numerous ponds, rivers, and streams that are home to native brook trout. Libby's is only about 15 miles from the ghost trains, and the route takes you along the length of Chamberlain Lake. At the northern tip of the lake, where the trail enters the woods, you'll find the remains of a steam-powered tramway that was used to shuttle logs to the shore from 1902 to 1926. Once deposited in the water, the logs were driven the length of Chamberlain and into Webster Lake via the man-made Telos Cut, and thence to the east branch of the Penobscot River en route to the mills in Bangor. Just a few hundred yards from the tramway are the fabled ghost trains themselves, a pair of 100-ton locomotives and their fuel cars that, starting in 1927, made it possible for logs to be transported along a more efficient route. Owned by the Great Northern Paper Company and known as the Eagle Lake and West Branch Railroad, the operation ran like this. Logs from the forest were floated down Eagle Lake and loaded onto two conveyors that carried them up a ramp and dropped them into waiting hopper cars. Once all 10 cars were filled, one of the locomotives pulled them 13 miles to the shores of Umbazooksis Lake, where the logs were again dumped in the water and driven south to Lake Chesuncook and into the west branch of the Penobscot River. The trains ran day and night, and during an average week would move more than 6,500 cords of wood. One can only marvel at the amount of work it must have taken to ship the locomotives, rails, cars, fuel, and other supplies deep into the Maine woods. Ironically, the railway was abandoned in 1933, a mere six years after it opened. And so that's the story of how a pair of massive locomotives came to exist in the Maine woods, an engineering feat to be contemplated by snowmobilers, paddlers, and hikers who explore the Allagash wilderness. <laughs>